Hello everyone, Mr. G here, continuing with our first lesson. Now that you know how to make a folder properly on our domain inside our school using Windows Explorer, now it's time to make a real Word document. Uh, so, I'm actually, the previous video I should say, I was connected to a school computer so I could show you how to work everything within our domain, uh, but now I'm just going to be working with Microsoft Word so I'm just using my own home computer. So you click on the start button, you go to all programs, you look for a folder called Microsoft Office, and you click on Microsoft Word 2010. Okay, so Word starts up like this. Um, if it's a little minimized, then the page is all the way to the left. You can just make it bigger and it'll be centered. Set that up however you like, whatever you prefer as far as the size or what have you. So I'm going to open up a document now that has all the information from our first day speech. My little speech that I gave you guys. So I'm navigating through Windows Explorer at home, going to my first day speech going to double click to open it up and here it is basically in condensed form so there was a lot more stuff we talked about I'm gonna have you type this in so that we can learn how to properly format things but I don't want you to spend a lot of time typing so I reduced it to just a few lines here and there just so we have enough text on the screen so that I can show you how to properly format things okay now I don't want to give you this exact document I want you to type all this stuff in um, but what I want to do is I also don't want you to sit there watching me type because that's a total waste of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all this text. And then I'm going to open another program which comes with every Windows computer. Go to All Programs, Accessories, and then there's a program called Notepad. Notepad is a text editor. It's not a word processor there's no formatting in there so now when I paste oh and by the way when I did the copy from the Word document I didn't actually go up here and hit copy I did control C which is a very common shortcut control C copy now over here I'm gonna do control V as in Victor for paste and it pastes in everything but notice how it came in there's absolutely no formatting here no bolds no bullets I mean it actually brought in the bullets but these bullets didn't come out right it brought in the numbers um, but they're not really sorry about that it wants to change my windows color scheme while I'm doing my screen recording to a basic thing so it has more resources to do the recording anyway uh, so these numbers aren't like numbers in Microsoft Word we'll see that in a second so now if I want to look at these two things side by side here's another, another nice shortcut I can grab this window and if I drag it to the left and off the screen it snaps to half the screen to the left very useful especially when you're watching my video and you want to have Microsoft Word open and watch the video to see all the wording here and type it in on the other side you could have Word on this side or the video on this side and Word on that side or vice versa however you like it so you can drag Microsoft Word off one side the video off the other side and you have them side by side uh, that's one way to do it with the mouse another way to do it is when you have a certain window selected if you hold down the control key on Windows uh, on your keyboard which usually if you just press it once it pops up the start menu but if you hold it down and press the right arrow key it snaps the window to the right if you press if you hold down the Windows key and press the up arrow key it maximizes down arrow key with the Windows key resizes it if you press it again it minimizes it so it's down here on the taskbar click on it it's back to the resized view and then if I was to hold the Windows key and press left it snaps it to the left so now it's on top of Microsoft Word so I'm gonna snap it right which makes it resize snap it right again now it's on the right hand side so side by side you could see the difference you got your bold you got your bullets things are lined up and this looks like yuck but that's what we want it we want it strictly just text so that I can show you how to do the formatting so what I'm going to do is close this out actually let me just close out Microsoft Word all the way and I don't want to save it and I'm just going to open Microsoft Word again all programs Microsoft Office Microsoft Office Word and I'm gonna snap that over to the left with my control I'm sorry not control Windows key and left arrow key at the same time 
and I'm going to copy all this text back over there now that all the formatting is gone. So I'm pressing Control C to copy. Coming over here, pressing, and you can't see the whole piece of paper, so you might want to reduce the size a little bit. And then Control V to paste. And now here's all the stuff I'm going to be working with. So now I can get rid of this notepad document because that was just to get rid of the formatting. And I know you don't want to see me type. And actually, in Microsoft Word, what they really want you to do is type everything in and then go back and formatting it. Go back and format it. So rather than trying to format this right after you type it so it's in the center and it's, and it's bold and it looks good the way you want it, they want you to type everything in first and then go back and format it. You don't actually have to do that, but a lot of people feel it works best that way. Okay, I actually brought back that notepad document because there was one other thing I wanted to show you. And that is that Microsoft Word is called a WYSIWYG. WYSIWYG is spelled W-Y-S-I-W-Y-G. It's an acronym standing for what you see is what you get. And what that kind of refers to is in Microsoft Word, actually, let me make this bigger. I could probably just zoom in with my screen recording. If you look over here, an I is a very small letter. It takes up that much space. A G is a very fat letter. It takes up much more space. When, you, when you're just in a text editor, all the letters take up the same amount of space. So if I highlight the I, it takes up that same size rectangle as the N or as the G. Okay, that's why over here, if I hit delete a few times, oops, sorry. If I hit delete a few times, well, I could still do that. And then I hit space, the space bar lines things up because every space is exactly the same width. But in Microsoft Word, it changes things based on, changes widths based on their font, the font size, other things on the line because it's always trying to crunch things together and make it look all compact. So the worst thing you can do in Microsoft Word is use the space bar to try and align anything. You'll never get it right. It'll always be off by a little bit. As in, if I was to type something over here, and I go over here and I space it over, and I go up here and I space that over and try and line it up, sometimes it looks exactly right, sometimes it's not so right. And it all depends on the letters that you have here. So if I put in a bunch of I's, Sometimes that'll throw things off. And you can see like the I looks a little bit to the left of the F. I don't know. It depends on how you look at it. And trust me, when you when you use a space bar, it will throw things off and you'll it'll be a little too much to the left, a little bit too much to the right. That's not the way to do it. And so I'm going to show you the right way to do it. So if we want first day speech centered, so now that I pointed that out with this uh, notepad thing, I think now I can close it out, but just in case, let me minimize it, because who knows, maybe I forgot something and I'll want it back open again. All right, so first day speech, how do we center it? Well, instead of trying to space over to the center, what we want to do is use the center button up here. That puts it exactly in the center. And maybe you can't tell if it's the center or not and what would help. I don't have it on or it wasn't on by default when I started Microsoft Word, which is probably good because maybe yours won't be on either. And what I'm talking about is getting to is the ruler. I like to have the ruler on all the time. So, I don't know, I guess we could measure this and see, but it kind of goes from like two and a half to four. I don't know. It looks like the center. If you use a center button, it's guaranteed to be the center. If you don't use a center button and you just space over, you can kind of put it in the center and maybe this kind of looks like the center to you maybe it doesn't maybe it looks like the center to me and not the guy I'm sending the document to and he might think gee he doesn't know what he's doing because it's not in the center so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna say first day Mr. Garino speech watch what happens now it doesn't look like it's in the center anymore of the school year 1617. Now it's definitely not in the center. Okay, but if we hadn't used the silly spaces, and where did they go? Well, there's this nice button over here called the show hide button. Kind of looks like a backwards P. If I click that, all these little dots, they don't really exist in the document. They're just showing you the formatting that spaces were used. Uh, the enter key was hit here, it's a paragraph mark the tab key was hit here or when you inserted the bullet it 
put in a tab key. Um, actually, when you insert a bullet, it puts in a tab, but now it's from Notepad, so it is just a tab. So it shows you the formatting. So I would do this. First of all, when you type, looking at the, all these crazy characters can make your eyes kind of go crazy. So I would just reveal it to see what I did and turn it off to fix it. So this, I'm going to backspace all the way, get rid of all the spaces, and then I'm going to hit the centering key. Now it's in the center. And you say, you know what? I don't want to say Mr. Carino school year. I just want first day speech. When I start deleting, look what happens. It moves in from both ends because it's centered. So if I type Mr. Garino and some other stuff, notice how it spreads out from both sides. It stays centered. So the point is you use the centering button. You don't use spaces to try and center something. Okay, when you're done with this, or as you're working, you want to save it, remember. So I'm going to, and I'm not connected to the school stuff now, so I'm just going to save it to a generic place. But you guys know you have to save it to your course name folder. So Tom Garino Game Programming, Tom Garino basic computer applications, whatever course you're in, your name, your course name, that's the folder you're going to choose. But again, I'm not in school right now, so I'm just going to go to my regular documents here, and I'm going to name it First Day Speech, Tom Garino, and click Save. Just in case my computer crashes while I'm doing this, I'm not going to lose all this work. So it's a good thing to do. So now I have to go over here and I'm going to take out all this stuff because it's not going to be there when you type it in. And actually, I'm going to pause my recording so as not to waste your time. Okay, so now that I got all those bullets and numbers removed that were really weren't put in there the right way because it was copied from Notepad, um, we're going to go and add them in the right way. So now that we have first day speech centered, we're going to put a bullet in front of greeting. So you highlight all this text and you go up to bullets which are over here. If you just click the button over here, it just gives you your standard circle bullet. You can click the drop down and choose other ones. You can go and do lots of custom things. But for this one, I'm just going to choose your everyday standard little dot bullet. And then I'm going to highlight this text, which you can drag across it, or you can get the little arrow on the left. Click to select it. Click bullets. Notice how they're perfectly aligned. And then uh, this stuff over here, be here on time. Now notice how if I click this show hide button I have one enter here but it's going down two lines and I don't really want that I only want it to go down one line in fact on my whole document I only want enters to be one line down not two lines down so I'm gonna use another shortcut key control A select all and then I'm gonna go up to this little button right here where it says paragraph this little down arrow I'm gonna click that and over here where it says don't add space between paragraphs of the same type. I'm going to click that. Also for line spacing it says multiple. I don't really want that. I just want single line spacing. And then I'm going to say OK. And now it puts it the way I want it. Where every enter is one line. At least I think so. Which should be. Let's see. Yeah. So that takes it out. So I hit delete. Took one out. I hit enter. Puts one in. But I don't want a bullet there. So now that when you hit enter, it automatically gives you a bullet. So just go up and click the bullet button, and it takes it off. And it kind of made the space a little bit bigger. I don't know that I really wanted that. Um, I don't know. Let me give it a little shot right here. Sometimes this could be kind of annoying. Let me check that again. And it still doesn't want to go away. And I bet you when I take this bullet off, it's going to give me extra space again. Yeah, it did. Let's not waste time on that because actually it kind of looks good with the, uh, with the extra space. So now over here, I want these things to be numbered. So I'm going to click the number button. But I want them to be indented more. Number of ways you can do that. This button decreases indent, so it moves it to the left. This button increases indent. So if you click it once, it moves it a little. You can click it twice to move it more. Maybe that's too much. Maybe that's good. Do you like it? You can leave it there. You can also mess around with these things on your ruler. This button down here that's a rectangle, if you click and hold it down, it moves those two things together. Okay, so if I move it just a little bit, it moves the whole paragraph to the left. If I move it a little bit back, it moves them all that way. If I grab the top one, it moves just the numbers over. Maybe you like that. Maybe you don't. 
if I grab the bottom one it moves just the letters over so you can move them independently or you can move them together so when you grab the trapezoids trapezoids that was, or pentagons I think they are uh, you move independently you grab the rectangle it moves them together okay so now we have uh, the numbers in there now we have general stuff I want that to have a bullet it's lined up with this looks good and then these this other stuff right here the half year course all the way down to something something accommodating we want those to be bullets but we don't want them to be the same bullets because we want to distinguish between the two so I'm gonna click the little triangle and choose a different one choose whatever one you want I'll choose the same one that was on the sheet I want it lined up with the numbers I'll try the quick indent thing and did it line up right yeah it did okay if it didn't I could fiddle with the ruler stuff okay so that looks good so far and then the last thing is you type in the text on the bottom what I also want to show you though once you get all that stuff typed in and now we have it all formatted nice um, is how to put a picture in your uh, word document and make it look nice as well and of course where are we gonna get a picture from the internet so I'm gonna open Firefox uh, you open whatever browser you like however you like to it's on the desktop on the start taskbar whatever I'm sure you'll find it okay so I'm gonna go up here in my search and I'm gonna search for that picture of the guy in the kayak with the shark so I'm gonna to go to the kayaker and I just did it before so it's up there good you don't have to watch me type kayaker followed by love sh love struck shark and let's see where is it let me go to images there we go so this is the remember this picture that I showed you so I'm gonna grab that so I'm gonna click on that you never want to right click here and say save where is save save image as because this is what we call a thumbnail it's a very the picture is much bigger it's 750 by 494 pixels and this picture right here is probably like I don't know 300 by 200 if that so it's a small picture it's a thumbnail it's not meant for you to save it it's just showing you a preview of the real picture you're supposed to click on it so you get the bigger picture in fact this may be the biggest picture but there may still be even a bigger picture so you should either click on this or come over here and say view image because sometimes it'll get even to a bigger picture now this one didn't but sometimes it'll fill the screen so if you want a picture to be your background you want the whole big picture because if you get a little picture and stretch it ugh, the quality goes to crap it gets all blurry okay so always so always do what I said click this first when you get here click view image if it opens a new window new tab it'll come here if you get another hand or a magnifying glass you can click it again to make it as big as possible and then you right click and do save image as at this point um, make sure you save it to your folder your name and either basic computer applications or game programming whichever course you're in and then you save the folder so I'm gonna save it just to I'm not gonna go to downloads because that's like a bad place for you guys in school to save it because they have that restricted so never save there so I'm gonna go to teaching courses this is my little project first day speech wow this got a long name I mean it'll work but why don't I just rename it to shark so it'll be easier and click save okay so now that I have the picture I'm gonna close out my browser close all my tabs and then over here I want to insert that picture right over here and this picture has nothing to do with this it's just a picture and I have all these show hide marks on so I'm gonna turn that off because it looks kinda of busy and then you come up here to insert picture and you wants to find it on your computer so it opens Windows Explorer and if you remember where you put it you should be able to find it you guys would of course click documents and if everything shows up all your folders you know you're in the right spot go find it if it doesn't you can click computer go to your Z Drive like I showed you in the previous video but me I saved it in a folder called teaching courses first day speech shark so I insert wow it's big but that's good because it's nice and clear we can resize it so we grab the little corner here shrinking it down doesn't lose quality stretching it out loses quality okay so if I move it down like over here you'll see it looks kinda of crappy it's just the text ends here we got the picture the text is over there 
um, I could put it in front of the B. Notice you get a little flashing line it says where to put it. And think about like a newspaper or magazine. The text flows around the picture and that's what I want. I want it to look good like that. So I'm going to come over here and say wrap text. So I'm going to click that little triangle and there's all different ones you can choose and choose the one you like. I usually like the one that says tight because it keeps the text nice and tight around the picture. Okay, so notice how it goes around that picture. Like, let me make this even a little smaller so you can see how it kind of goes around and even goes underneath. Okay, so that kind of looks nice. And then maybe you even want to do some stuff to your picture to make that look even nicer too because right now it's just a flat picture right from the internet. Everybody knows you grabbed it from the internet. Yay, big deal. When you click on the picture, notice the ribbon up here, all the words up here. It doesn't have a certain word I'm looking for, which is to format the picture. But if I click on the picture, all of a sudden I get a whole other set of menus, picture tools, format. And what I want to do is maybe put a border around here, make this thing look a little different. I can choose any of these preset things. Oh, that one looks pretty cool when you think about it. Um, or you can click the drop down, and there's a few more. Okay, um, let's pick a very, I don't know, in fact, let's not pick one of the presets. Let's go over here and say picture border, make it black, picture effects, a glow, give it a red glow, picture layout, eh, that's kind of crazy, I don't want to do that. So the point is you can pick from here and do your own sort of effects, or you can come over here and pick in one of the pre-built in ones and say hey I'm done real quick because I'm lazy and I got a nice thing and I don't really care about doing all the other options either way notice when I click away the format tab goes away when I click back on it the format tab uh, reappears so that's the way to put a picture in how to line up your document make, make a real nice little document to submit for some project you have to do for some teacher or whatever and make it look good so you get a nice grade now the picture I chose is with the shark you don't have to choose that picture. Choose whatever picture you like, as long as it's appropriate. Stick it in there, make it look nice. When you're all done, call me over, and we'll all be happy. Thank you very much.